Um, as, as, as perhaps that brief um, hiccup demonstrated, I am the exception on this panel. I am still wedded, along with, I believe, um, the majority of people who are boosting sales of these <laughs> objects, heavy objects I've dragged um, uh, 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 across the Atlantic with me. Um, but I'm also a convert, despite myself, to digital uh, communication. And, and, I, and I, I'm going to give you a brief outline. And I want to start by saying two years ago, we were given money by the AHRC. We, the Archive of Performances of Greek and Roman Drama, the APGRD in Oxford, uh, we were given the money by the Arts um, and Humanities Research Council UK to translate these two early publications from the APGRD, Medea in performance and Agamemnon in performance, into interactive multimedia ebooks. When this was first mooted by my colleagues, um, and, and, and I suppose in a way it's obvious my younger colleagues uh, that this would be an exciting project to work on. I have to confess that I was not hugely enthusiastic. My limited knowledge of ebooks were that they looked remarkably flat. They looked remarkably unexciting. For someone like me, almost the equivalent of gazing at an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, the idea that research was going to be more widely disseminated through the ebook was something that I really didn't understand. However, when um, our archivist at that time, Naomi Setchell, and my data developer, Tom Robell, spoke in terms of a digital exhibition, I began to get more excited. We have an incredibly rich um, uh, collection uh, of theatrical ephemera, which is very beautiful in our collection. It includes also audio um, and uh, video uh, material. And we were very conscious, and I particularly so, that one had to come to Oxford to view this material. Of course, there was the option of digitizing it, but as many of you will know, that's hugely expensive and very, very time consuming. And in our case, would have involved us in a lot of copyright um, uh, problems because we hold a lot of material but we don't necessarily always hold copyright for them. So the idea of a digital exhibition, um, much more like say a website for uh, an opera house or so on, was something that I, I, I really could understand. But very quickly um, it was pointed out to me that we could do something that would indeed be absolutely underpinned by research. So not simply a web page, but we could combine um, both the interactivity of a web page by viewing, by having the facility to view uh, video, for example, but provide also the structure, and of course this is where I come into the team, provide the narrative that a conventional book uh, supplies. So we have produced a hybrid uh, between, um, as I say, um, a, a website and a traditional book. Um, it can be read, there's a contents page to the book, it can be read linearly, but it also, like a, a, a web page, can be read in a non-linear way. The reader can, through the hyperlinks, choose their own uh, route through the book. Um, I'm going to show you um, a, a, a range of material from the two books. Uh, the Medea uh, in performance, which is um, uh, the original book, is entitled in the e-book Medea, A Performance History. It's freely available um, uh, already uh, in, uh, uh, in iBooks, um, and, and I'm showing this from iBooks. And the Agamemnon, A Performance History, is shortly coming out. So looking at the first and the second um, of my uh, slides, um, you can see that we opted, these are chapter cards, both of these represent chapter one, this is 
uh, from the first one from Medea and the second one from Agamemnon. And they involved another very exciting um, aspect to the project. They involved us commissioning new artwork. And we were lucky to come across um, a young graphic artist called Tom Cuccieri, who was very keen on the project and lent um, his services at, at very limited um, costs to it. And so each chapter has um, one of these um, cards and uh, across the books then there's a sense of, of, of design coordination and, and, and continuity. This is um, one of the sections within the first chapter, the first chapter of the Medea book, Medea and the Black Sea. Within that chapter is a page called, a section called Medea in Colchis. And I, I chose this page to show you because I wanted to give you a range, a view of, 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 of the range of possibilities and the amount of material that a, a page in such a book can contain. So here, um, we have in, in, in the top right-hand corner um, uh, a, a snippet, and, and, and only a very brief snippet, from a larger podcast that we hold, um, uh, which is Helen McCrory, the, the actor who recently played Medea in London, talking about how Medea's origins have informed, had informed her, her performance. I, would also draw your attention to a video uh, interview that we have down here um, in, in the right-hand corner with uh, Professor Olga Taxidou, uh, <laughs> who's a professor of theatre um, in Edinburgh. And she was someone who we particularly uh, wanted to contribute to a chapter or a section on the deer in Colchis. She not only herself has written a play called Bringing the Deer Home, but she's also um, a descendant of a Pontic Greek family and was some woman who was particularly aware of the very, very different status that um, Medea enjoys in, 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 in Georgia today. And indeed, um, this image, uh, if, uh, as you see, I, I clicked on about this image just now, uh, this statue uh, is on display, um, this is Medea with her golden fleece in, in present day Tbilisi. And so um, our reader knows exactly where Tbilisi and, and Georgia is. Uh, we include a map to show that. A page from an, the Agamemnon uh, opening chapter, which we called Beginnings, um, deals, uh, sections deal with uh, the early tradition of, of the academic Greek play. Uh, and Agamemnon is routinely either the inaugurating play or it's um, very much uh, part of that, that early tradition. And that was true in, in, in Cambridge and, and, and at Harvard. And uh, if here was an example of how we could display what is in our collection, and we have a very large gallery of images of the Cambridge Agamemnon. And from this, you can, of course, see that really every page of, of this ebook consists of, 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 of at least two, or very often because there's a glossary um, behind uh, every page, two or three uh, further dimensions. And, and, and similarly, with the Harvard um, play, we have other. Um, material that, that we can share with, with, with our reader. But it's not simply, and I, I, I think it's very important, it is not simply about uh, displaying images. Uh, one thing I, I learned was not only um, as I wrote my text, my colleagues routinely shredded my text, um, and I, I learned to live with that, I had to learn to live with that very early, but they shredded it, I think, and I learned also quickly for absolutely the right reasons that often if there was too much text, I was not doing something right. As people say who, who write for television, it's this kind of writing is essentially image driven. And like good documentary writing, it's image driven 
but absolutely underpinned by serious research. And I choose, again, from the Medea volume, or the Medea book, um, this uh, um, page, because um, this is a, a, a section, the chapter is called Medea and Empire. Uh, this is a section talking about a little known French ad adaptation uh, of 1931 called Asie by Henri René Le Normand. And it is complete, in order to understand um, the significance of this Medea, it's absolutely important that our readers should understand the wider context and particularly French uh, imperial um, power in Indochina at this moment. And the playwright was prompted particularly by uh, the colonial uh, exhibition in Paris in 1931. And so here in this gallery, we felt that being able to show some of the wider uh, material was very helpful. And similarly, obviously, to explain the geopolitical um, context, um, a map was essential as well. So images are contextualized um, as, as, as routinely as, as possible. This, um, from the Agamemnon volume, is another example of how one can contextualize this material uh, in a way that the, the print publication can't. Um, uh, at Syracuse, as many of you will know, there's the longest standing um, festival of, of, of Greek drama that runs to this day. And it began in 1914 um, with a production of, of, of the Agamemnon. And there is increasingly material available about it. And uh, we have here, um, again in the image gallery, some interesting um, stills of, 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 of costumes and, um, and set. So you can include really this um, extraordinary range of material that, um, that, that is available. We also are very aware that our readers are drawn from beyond the academy and, and even within the academy, they may not necessarily uh, be classicists. So when we talk, particularly when we're discussing the early modern receptions of, of these plays, of the multiple sources, it's remarkably unhelpful if we don't include, um, sorry, things like um, timelines. So here, for example, we discuss ways that we might uh, be able to um, discuss different kinds of media. And uh, Tom Rebell was able to come up with, with not only a very helpful timeline, but also um, a very beautiful one. Um, I think um, as well, and one I'm already told that has been, you know, particularly valued by by teachers uh, and lecturers uh, in the lecture uh, theatre for undergraduates, but also school teachers um, as well. And then we were able to um, include the Medea sarcophagus in in Berlin, um, and to, you know. Think of ways of, 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 of not only showing the image, but also um, telling um, a narrative uh, as well. Um, and, 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 and this is another slide um, contextualizing that early um, scholarly play tradition. In this, time, in this case, uh, it's in, in, in Paris. Um, again, uh, an, Agam uh, an Agamemnon in 1886. This was around a, a conference not, not dissimilar to this one. Um, why we feel that looking at the image, um, the background image in detail is important, as you might be able to make out, this is actually a masked production, which um, taking place at L'Opéra in Paris in 1886, albeit for an academic conference, is in itself uh, of considerable interest. And when we come to, uh, again, um, thinking about the early modern period, we're very interested, of course, in talking about um, uh, scholarly editions available at this time and also vernacular translations, but we're all equally interested in how these plays were received uh, in the popular theatre. And uh, Thomas Hayward, um, for some time a, a neglected playwright, is now becoming someone of, of, of considerable interest um, in how he popularised the classics. 
And in the Brazen Age um, of 1613, for example, he has um, a very good example of um, an early, especially Ovidian-inspired uh, representation of Medea, the witch. And on stage, we actually see Medea in a kind of pyrotechnic <laughs> display. And if you look down the bottom here, we, the stage direction reads, and if you can't follow, you can look at the modern spelling of that. Um, two fiery bulls are discovered, the fleece hanging over them, and the dragon sleeping beneath them. Medea with strange fireworks hangs above in the air in the strange habit of a conjurer. And if we need uh, to think about how that might have been done on stage, um, we have this image uh, to help us. Because even if this is not the image that was used um, in this production, this shows, as you can see, how pyrotechnics were possible in um, 1613 uh, in the theatre. Um, I started by showing you um, some artwork that, that was commissioned uh, for the project. But the other thing we've been able to do, not only call upon um, amateur but very good amateur actors to read Latin um, and allow us to have um, the, the Latin and the English and the voice both um, on, on the page, but we've also been able to commission short films from a company called Barefaced Greek, uh, which show that um, these Greek plays, in this case it's the Agamemnon, can be performed in exciting new ways uh, and not necessarily um, in togas, and definitely the company Barefaced Greek were particularly determined to take the Greek, the sound of the Greek language, uh, into a, a wider um, uh, community, those uh, especially interested uh, in, 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 in theatre and performance. Um, and, and, and of course, that's especially really a, a, a how this book can be used in a pedagogical context. And at the end of the book, um, we have um, not only a gallery, further images, but after the end of every chapter, we have further reading um, and at the end of the book proper, there is an appendix with, with lots of uh, additional information that uh, a new um, uh, reader or someone who's being introduced to Medea and Agamemnon for the first time will be able to go to consult. Um, I just want to insist, and you must realize that this is an incredibly uh, collaborative project. Um, as I say, my, my role was, was as the principal investigator, but really the overseer of the project, someone who you know, offered text that then um, tran turned out to be very different at the end. Um, I relied um, extremely uh, heavily uh, on um, uh, our data developer, who, as I say, built um, the book, and we can talk maybe a bit about that after, in iBooks um, author. Um, it's, it's, uh, it was then, um, of course, for reasons of accessibility, um, uh, changed um, or translated, I think, or something similar, um, into EPUB 3 by, by um, a specialist uh, in e-publishing uh, called Chris Jennings at Oxford Brookes University. Um, and I suppose the beauty of it um, is that I haven't had to use the internet. Uh, the other beauty of it in terms of sustainability is that hopefully now there are lots of copies out there. And as Tom Robel, our data developer, has, 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 has said, has told me and, and has now written in our toolkit, which is out there again so that we hope we can share best practice, if there is an e-book uh, e reader uh, in 20 years' time, able to read both um, an iBook and also an EPUB 3 book, then um, our books will be as accessible um, in 20 years' time as they, are, as they are now. So thank you very much.